The focus generated here, the ideas generated here at Summit, the relationships created, this event is gonna move the industry forward. You're gonna do it. I'll start with our vision and our values. This, is, this slide is just key to understanding Viva, who we are and where we're going. Our vision guides us and it sets the direction. We're building the industry cloud for life sciences. That's software, data, and services that help the industry get more efficient and effective. We wanna be essential to and appreciated by every company in life sciences. Our values are in priority order and they help us make our decisions. First is do the right thing. That's just pretty simple. Honesty, integrity, do the right thing. Actively know what the right thing is and do it. Customer success has three parts. It's for you, the people in life sciences. You have to enjoy working with our people and our products. It has to work for your companies as well, delivering positive ROI. And it has to work for the industry overall, make the industry more effective. So customer has three parts. Employee success, pretty simple. For our team, it has to be a place where they can do their best work. And speed reminds us, do things quickly and correctly with quality the first time so we don't have to redo them. So we can keep our speed like a startup even as we're a big company. And finally, Viva is a public benefit corporation, a PBC. So let me take a minute to really explain that, what it is and why it matters. So a normal company, especially a public company, the board's duty is to maximize shareholder value. That's the job of the board and the official purpose of the company. But as a Delaware PBC, Viva is not that way. That's not in our or articles of incorporation. Our board's duty is to balance the interests of all concerned. So that means customers, employees, shareholders, and the industry overall. So it's not all about the money, about Viva, it is not. It's not all about the shareholders. So being a PBC is real. It's at the bedrock of our company. It's not just marketing. It makes us a more durable partner for the industry. You can count on Viva to be here for the long term for you. You know, and Viva's been around 16 years now, but really will most likely be set up to be around here for generations. That's what we set up the company for. And I never would have thought that when I started Viva. It was the last thing on my mind, right? I just hope we could get some happy customers and somehow just survive for the first year or two so we could be become profitable. And if that happened by some chance and some good fortune and some hard work, you know, we'd figure it out from there. And we have. Here we are 16 years later talking about generations and we have all of you, our customers, really to thank for that. So thank you for your partnership over the years and getting us started. Now, talking about our products, we have two main product offerings in our industry cloud. We have commercial cloud. That's for the sales, medical, and marketing parts of life science. It's very important, right? You're doing all this hard work to, to manufacture products, get clinical trials approved. That commercial part is really important. That brings it to patients. You know, and then we have the development cloud for the R&D and quality areas. That's what this summit is about. Commercial cloud, well, that's for another day and another summit. But before I provide an update on our development cloud products, I'll take a moment to talk about technology trends in general and AI, that's a very hot topic now. So I'll talk about what that is and what it means for Viva and the industry. So to step back, I've been involved with software engineering software in general for more than 30 years. I started my career, in fact, as a software engineer at the IBM Silicon Valley Lab many years ago, and at that time, things were different. You think about it, there was no mobile phones, no World Wide Web, no Google, no iPhone, cloud computing, Amazon Web Services, those things were not here. In fact, most companies didn't have email at that time. So imagine that, right? Your work life without email, you know. Wow, that might be good. Anyway, <laughs> it was different. So, you know, I've seen a lot of trends over the years. And here's the thing about trends as it relates to business. Trends either become mainstream and easy or they just fade out. Trends don't create lasting competitive advantage. So email, websites, iPhones, cloud computings, web services, hot trends at one point, 
They became easy and commodity. Every company here uses them. Other things like blockchain, virtual reality, they just kind of fade out. They exist, but just kind of in the background. So trends don't create that advantage, but what does? Capabilities, they can create long-term advantage. A capability, what's that? That means core business processes in your very important areas, enabled by technology, and most importantly, by teams of people who know how to work together with those processes, with that technology, towards the common goals. And capabilities like that, that's very hard to build. That's why it's competitive advantage. You can't just do it overnight. They take time. It involves people. So there's a lot of excitement about AI today and you know, also a lot of hype. It's certainly the biggest trend we've seen in many years. Now to step back, there are many different types of AI, just like there are many types of software in general. There's AI for facial recognition, self-driving cars, radiology, lots of different AI in the drug development process. You know, these are very impactful tools. They're helping many industries in serious ways. Self-driving cars would not be here without AI. Just think about that. Large language models, that's also a, a very specific type of AI, like ChatGPT. They're, they're very specific. They're built around language. And they're also getting a lot of attention and hype right now. So where do I think that all of this is going? Of course, nobody exactly knows, but I'll give you my view. AI applications, they're going to continue to get better and be very useful. They will become good and commodities, good at very certain things. They'll be great tools. But they're not going to replace humans or create long-term competitive advantage for life sciences company. And as to large language models specifically, they're going to get very good over time at certain things, mainly language related. Language translation, speech recognition, text to voice, removing language barriers. Think about that. That's fundamental. People actually underestimate what that'll mean. They'll also power the next wave of personal digital assistance. You know, those things are going to make the current Siri type things on your iPhone just seem very primitive, very primitive. They'll probably revolutionize the smartphone over the next five or 10 years. Think about that. That's impactful as well. And they're going to answer many questions much better than a Google search for sure. So they're going to do a lot of things, these large language models, but they won't do everything. So our approach, what we do, I think, is important first off. We deliver technology platforms for your most important areas, industry-specific areas, and we do that through software data and services. And our software applications, they have core processes built right in, and they're also configurable. So you can innovate around the edges. They're not just hard-coded. They're modular, so you can start in any area, and they integrate well with existing applications. That's the blueprint for our applications, for our development cloud. And we're committed to product excellence. That means in each application, staying with it for however long it takes and continuous improvement. Now, when we build our applications, we always try to leverage the right technology, the underlying technologies, including AI, where it makes sense. And so for AI, we're taking a focused and practical approach to AI in our platforms, and that's centered around two things. First is application bots. These are application-specific bots that use AI to perform very specific functions. And we look for functions that are repetitive and high volume. So you can assign that work to a bot rather than a human. The TMF bot, that was our first bot to classify documents. And now we're bringing out RimBot as well. And there'll be more bots with more capabilities over time. So bots is the first thing. The second is the direct data API, and this is pretty groundbreaking stuff. We've actually been working on this for about two years. It's a hard one. This is a new and extremely fast API to pull data, full data and incremental data from the Viva Vault applications, roughly 100 times faster than the existing APIs that are out there in the industry. Groundbreaking stuff. And that direct data API that will enable yourselves, customers, and partners to more easily build AI applications that need complete and current 
view of the data out of the Viva applications. So you're going to hear a lot more about this from Avril and from the platform team over this summit and over the years to come. It's a foundational thing for Viva. So that's our approach to AI. It's very focused, very practical. Now, getting into Development Cloud. That's the technology foundation for drug development. That's what we're trying to develop. This is for running clinical trials, to main regulatory and safety compliance, to ensure quality in product manufacturing. So great cloud applications in each area, but they're configurable and connections that go across areas. And it's for all types of companies. You know, emerging biotechs, that's about going fast. You know, getting the essentials in today and get better over time. You know, there might be a great tomorrow, but that won't happen if today's clinical trials don't go well. That's the life of the emerging biotech. And there's never, not, never enough people to do all the work. Everybody has to wear so many hats. So technology has to be a helper and not a burden. Now for large biopharma, that's different. It's about capabilities that allow scale across many products, many countries, many manufacturing sites to do more and to go faster without increasing the number of people in a linear fashion. And critically, to absorb product acquisitions efficiently into your broad capabilities. So these are very different needs for different companies, but that's what we want to do in Development Cloud. We want to do that the best we can, be the best technology platform for companies of all sizes, because that's the reality of, in life sciences. Not all companies are the same. They're not all built for the same type of thing. And we're really filling out the development cloud now with most of the main applications needed across the areas. So we have over 30 applications, including seven new applications that we're announcing today. Seven. I think I said that right. That's a lot. It still surprises me. So I'll touch on a few highlights in each area. Now the details, they're gonna come in the zone keynotes, the customer sessions, the product roadmaps, the hallway conversations over the next two days. They'll come in these one-on-one -on -one conversations in the zones and the innovation hubs as well. That's very valuable. You know, we have all of our development cloud product managers here at Summit, those that didn't get COVID. You know. So we'll have uh, over 100 of them here today and our full strategy teams. So if you have questions, there is an expert here that'll give you an answer. Ask any Viva person, they know they're dot connectors. They'll get you to that person. And our teams are gonna learn from your questions. That's critical. It will feed their intuition. Your questions will change what Development Cloud is five to 10 years now, from now. So have that interaction, get to know these people. All right, that said, let's get started in the clinical area. It's a big area and we're starting there first because that's where we're making some really fundamental changes. First with our vision for clinical, we wanna deliver the most complete and highest quality clinical platform that's great for patients, sites, and sponsors. Pretty simple, right? And why is that? Because clinical trials, that's about an ecosystem. Trials are designed, funded, and tech-enabled by sponsors, but they're executed by research sites who are treating patients and collecting that data. So a clinical platform needs to be good for patients, sites, and sponsors. There's no shortcut. It has to be great for everybody. If we think about sponsors first, we have a suite of applications that fit together. You know, these are the main applications on the screen there that you need to run a clinical trial. And Viva is actually, surprisingly, really the only company that provides all of these applications. Why? They're hard to build. You need a great team, big team, many years. You need a platform like Viva Vault. It's, it's hard work. It takes many years. We have that commitment to product excellence for each application. And some are widely used, and I would consider them excellent applications today. We gotta to continue to invest in those. Things like ETMF, make them better. The work never stops. And some are still maturing. They'll be excellent over time. They might not be there yet. So let me touch on, I can't go through all these applications, but let me touch on some of our newer applications. I could go through them all, but we'd be here a long time. Site Vault, that's about site collaboration. So contacts, communication, document exchange, safety letters, end of study media, things like that. There's a lot of stuff that goes on and a lot of it goes on now in email. And if you think that's frustrating for a sponsor, imagine how it is for a site. 
So SideConnect has a standard and simple way to do this collaboration. It lives in the same vault as your ETMF and CTMS, so no data duplication. And because the site interface is standard, the same across each sponsor, it creates a much better site experience when sites work across sponsors. Steady training also touches sites. That's for protocol specific training and general clinical training for sites and internal staff. It keeps all those training records, stores the information right in your ETMF. Again, it has a standard site interface that creates a better site experience. Now in the clinical data management area, a couple that I want to talk about are randomization and trial supply management and EPRO, patient reported outcomes. So again, these applications are used by sites, especially EPRO. That's very involved for sites, that process. These products have full product and strategy teams behind them with a lot of autonomy. They work with any EDC system. Other EDC companies, they have made ePro and RTSM systems that are kind of add-ons to their EDC system. And that's not our approach. We're building the best RTSM system. We're building the best ePro system. We have a lot of people here that know about these applications. I encourage you to check them out. And now the newest area of the clinical platform for sponsors, that's the industry data area. So we have site base for site selection, trial base for protocol optimization. And then there's open data clinical. That's a little bit different and we're announcing that here today. This is modeled after open data commercial and we've had that for many years, open data commercial. So open data and clinical, that's global reference data about sites and investigators. It's updated daily by our research team and it's integrated daily right into your CTMS. So it's about creating clean master data for efficient reporting and downstream applications. Sitebase, that's available today. It's a, it's a very early product, but available for early adopters. Open data and trial base, they're planned for the end of next year. So we're giving everybody a, a long heads up on what we're doing so you can plan. So that's the sponsor view of it, a modular set of applications and data that all work together. You know, but what about the sites and the sponsors? So for the sites, they have to get access to this sponsor technology easily and they'll do that through the study portal and I'll talk about what that is. They don't need to know all the details of what goes on in those applications, but they need to access and be able to use them easily and get support. Patients, they get all their information directly from the MyViva app on their mobile phone or browser. That means their ePro forms, their e-consent, their schedule, contact information, site communication, everything they need about a study in one app on their phone or on a browser. Let me talk about sites a little bit and our goal there. Because as you know, clinical research, it happens at the sites. It doesn't happen in the sponsor's building. You know, to put a fine point on that, the sponsor doesn't know the patient you know, not their name, what they look like, who their spouse or child is, how sick they feel. They don't talk to them about their hopes and their fears and their life. But people at the sites do. The nurses, the doctors, the investigators, clinical research coordinators, that's where the clinical research happens. So we wanna help improve clinical research, which is an ecosystem. So to do that, we have to help the sites. And that's what we want to do, provide free software and global support to sites. Free software, Viva quality software for free. And today we have Site Vault for that. It's a compliant, validated, easy to use investigator site file. It's sort of the equivalent of ETMF, but for sites, they need it. It also enables remote monitoring. And sites are using it a lot. And the usage is increasing because word is getting around. Today we have over 8,000 active users on Site Vault, and that spans across 1,500 active sites. And we're also introducing more applications for sites, two more here at Summit. First, Viva ID. Now that's a way for Viva to provide one ID and password. It's provided by Viva. It will work with any Viva system across all sponsors. So that means we have EDC, EPRO, study training, RTSM, whatever. And it also works with the sites system that they own, that site vault. So one ID works across both. So that's a big deal for sites. You may not think so, but it is a big deal. 
One ID gets him into both. So think about it. Today, clinical research coordinators, they literally have up to 50 different IDs and passwords to get into different systems from different sponsors. It's the truth, they do. It's hard to manage. Now think about it. what if your company did that to you? You showed up day one and they said, here's your 50 IDs and passwords. Good luck, find a spreadsheet, deal with it. How is that gonna make you feel? You know, it's very frustrating for clinical researchers today. They have this ID and password problem it's actually getting worse as technology grows. It's getting worse. And it's kind of, I would say, embarrassing for the life sciences industry. We need to do better than that for the research sites. So we're gonna help solve that. We wanna try with help of, of you and everybody to, to, to solve that. So Viva ID is free for sites. It's also free for sponsors. It's built right into the Viva applications. And it's coming in December this year. It's coming quickly. We've been working on it for a while. It'll be open and free also to partners and competitors of Viva. If they wanna enable their applications with Viva ID, that's great. We're trying to improve the clinical research system, so we have to be open to everybody, whether you're partnering or competing with Viva. Now, Study Portal, that's another application for sites. It's related to Viva ID, but it's distinct and separate. It allows sites to create shared lists of sponsor systems for an individual study. We call this a study profile. It's the sites, they could create a study pro profile, email it around, a link, and it works for systems that aren't enabled by Viva ID, and there it functions as a password keeper. So Study Portal replaces spreadsheets, password keepers, and sticky notes for any study, regardless of technology. And how do you log into Study Portal? That's right, you're probably getting it. You log into Study Portal with Viva ID. So Viva ID is the one way in. We're very excited about this. We have a bold vision for clinical. We're creating the most complete and highest quality clinical platform. It'll be patient-centric, site-centric, and sponsor-centric. And most importantly, it will improve clinical research that's gonna help Viva and every company in here, and that's gonna help the clinical research sites. That's gonna help patients. So very excited about what we're doing in clinical. Now, move to regulatory. This is in a different stage than clinical. Our regulatory system is pretty complete and stable with all the main applications that are needed. And they're pretty mature, including publishing. It's mature and working well for companies of all sizes. We now have nearly 400 customers in the regulatory area, and I'll call out just a few points. First, collaborative authoring with Microsoft Word. A lot of you use it, a real game changer. No more emailing around file versions. And then continuous publishing. So your system is up to date, ready to publish, ready to go when you need to, rather than a mad scramble at the end with an external tool. So really happy with the progress here. I'm also especially happy with that last bullet point, the new archive viewer, and why is that? Because we introduced that last year, and we've had an archive viewer for about seven years, I guess, or at least five years before that. But it wasn't good enough, so even though it was a market-leading thing that was used by many people, it wasn't good enough, so we wrote a new one, and you're all benefiting for that. I'm really happy that we have to, you know, we keep this innovation going, even when we become the industry standard, that stands for, it's part of being essential and appreciated, right? That's, we wanna push ourselves to do that. And I'm happy that you pushed our, ourselves to do that. You pushed Viva to do that. You said it's not good enough. And our, our product teams did something about it. Now safety, this is our newest area overall of development cloud. We're on track to have a complete platform. You know, we're making good progress. I would say we were about four years or so behind the regulatory team, but catching up. You know, it started later, safety. Safety is an area that's badly in need of innovation. The legacy systems out there, you know, they're just not evolving. And they won't ever be true cloud systems, those, those legacy systems. They just can't morph like that. Our first two apps, safety and safety docs, are pretty mature, 70 customers today, live with big companies. Thank you again to Abvi. You know, Abvi's live and happy now with every country except for Japan. Thank you for your partnership, the Abbey team. You really helped Viva and you helped advance safety for the industry. 
So our focus on safety now, it's about increasing automation and efficiency, rounding off the corners, and also the clinical connector from safety to EDC. And the way we're doing that, that's going to be a real game changer. I encourage you to talk to some experts about that one. And then we're also introducing two new applications to round out the suite, Safety Workbench and Signal. These are analytic applications that are coming at the end of the year and really will complete the suite, and I'll talk a little bit about those. So these aren't transactional applications, they're about analytics. They're really meant for the larger biopharma when you operate in many countries across many products. And these are tightly connected to vault, safely and vault safety. In fact, they require vault safety, they don't work without vault safety. Why? Because the data comes from vault safety using the direct data API. So all that safety data in a very large company will sync every night in 15 minutes or less with zero custom integration work, even for the largest customer. We can't do that if we're trying to integrate with legacy systems. We would have to develop two different products. We want to be open for sure, but we can't sacrifice product excellence, and that's why these products will require our safety systems. And finally, the quality area, that's for manufacturing and R&D, and we're really innovating in quality. We're building a unified quality system across quality assurance, quality control, and training, and that's never been done before. Nobody's attempted that before. These systems are important and they're heavily used. Some of our customers have over 10,000 users each day logging into these quality systems, and they're mostly related to manufacturing. So quality docs and QMS, they're mature, and just like regulatory, we have to continue to improve. The work never stops. For training, it's both the software for GXP training, the learning management system, but as well the content, the courses in our Learn GXP courses. And then validation management coming along really nicely, multiple early adopters live. I think that product will really mature quickly. LIMS is a very big new area. This is the manufacturing QC, bringing limbs to the cloud, replacing those patchwork legacy systems. You know, it's going to take many years to mature limbs, just like safety did, but we're getting our first early adopters live now, and we're working through it. And, you know, as if that wasn't enough in quality, we're announcing two new applications today, e-forms and batch release. E-forms, that will replace the log books, the paper forms, the clipboard, clip Clipboards, clipboards, I can't even say the word, it's been so long since I used one. Clipboards, but those are common in manufacturing sites. We're gonna replace that, be more advanced. Batch release, that's a really interesting and impactful product. That's about making faster product release and ship decisions, you know, when you're manufacturing for multiple products in multiple countries. So rather than gathering all that release data at the end from lots of different systems, you keep it up to date with a batch release product continuously up to date. That way you can make real time and market specific decisions. Batch release is tightly integrated with Viva QMS and it requires QMS, but it works with any RIM or LIM system. That's not a requirement. And of course it has to integrate directly with your SAP system. Batch release, that'll again be available towards the end of next year. So you're getting the idea, a lot of stuff coming towards the end of next year. All right, so Development Cloud, it's a big thing. We have a lot going on. To wrap it up, we announced seven new products. That's a lot of products. Believe me, we're not gonna do that every year. That would be too much. But this year, we're really laying out our long-term plans, and then we got a lot of good work to do with yourselves, with the customers as partners over the years. All right, to wrap up my section, I just want you to know that the whole Viva team is committed to your success and the overall success of the industry. We want to be your long-term partner. That's how we think about it. So for me and all the Viva people, thank you for being great customers. You give us energy, you challenge us, you, know, you pick us up when we fall down. You make us better. So thank you very much. I'll hand it over to Avril. She'll talk a bit about our platform, and then we'll hear directly from customers. Thank you, Peter. Always a privilege and a pleasure to be here. Peter shared a lot about what's going on in the applications. I'm going to spend a few minutes talking about what's new and exciting in the platform. The Vault platform provides a common set of capabilities that powers the application families. And they can really be thought about in three different categories. Those categories are configure and administer, 
develop and integrate, and scalability, availability, and performance. In Configure and Administer, that's really the tool set that lets you make the applications best fit for your organizations. Things like security, workflow, reporting, those are all part of configuring your applications. In Develop and Integrate, this is where a more technical tool set allows you to take the vaults that you have and connect them into your ecosystem. Peter mentioned integrating with SAP is a great example. You'd have your Java SDK and your APIs in that bucket. And lastly, scalability, availability, and performance provides the foundation to really operate all of the applications. And one of my favorite topics in that bucket is about performance, and so I'd like to spend a minute there. How many of you remember pre-Vault in your legacy applications, how long it took to open and view a document? Did it take a minute? Did it take two minutes? Today in Vault, we have over three million documents being viewed every day across the globe. And for each of you inside of your companies, those doc views take not a minute, they take a second. The average for every doc view in Vault is a second. And 10 years ago, I stood up here and talked about two seconds, which is our goal, but we've worked relentlessly to keep it at a second. Performance is at a critical part of your application usability, and we pay a great deal of attention to that across every application and every platform team. But I want to highlight three other areas. The first is action layouts, and action layouts is in the configure and administer area. It's a project we've been working on to take what is currently our page layouts, which are very data rich. In fact, if you think about a monitoring visit or a quality event or a registration, very data rich pages, lots of sections, maybe 20, hundreds of fields. I'm gonna contrast that with an action layout, which is a very specialized view, specifically optimized to a given activity. You would only see the fields that you need to interact with. Are you entering a quality event or are you approving it? You might see different fields. You're in a different role. You're doing a different function. These action layouts will make it much easier to use Vault to train users to get work done in a streamlined and simplified way. We are so excited about what that will bring to the application footprints. Um, be sure to ask in each of your individual tracks. Your product managers will love to talk about action layouts. The next example in the integrate area is direct data API. Peter talked again about the importance of getting data out of Vault, whether that's to feed downstream systems or even power your new AI applications. With the direct data API, we're going to make it fast and easy to get complete and reliable data from Vault. Think about the ability to get every 15 minutes the incremental updates for all changes in the Vault and a full daily extract once a day. This will dramatically simplify how you can get data out of Vault and into your expanded ecosystem. And the last topic is 10-minute upgrades. A year ago in August, you would have had 22R2 put into your vaults, and you would have had a six-hour maintenance window for that upgrade. You rely on Vault too much, 24 by 7, many of you now, to have your vault down for six hours. It's just not tenable. And I'm happy to say that in 23R2, last August, a month ago, the release was no more than 30 minutes of downtime per vault which is a really incredible change from six hours to 30 minutes. But I'm pleased to say in December, when we do your upgrades, no vault will be down for more than 10 minutes. And that's the kind of world-class availability you can expect from the vault platform, and we're really excited to continue to work to deliver that. I would like to, at this time, get a customer perspective. Let me introduce Regina Norelli from Replimune and Jennifer Trundle of Gilead. It's gonna be really fun to compare and contrast the stories of change from an emerging biotech and an enterprise pharma. To get rolling, how about we have you introduce yourselves and share a little bit of background? Sure, Avril. I'm Jennifer Trundle, and I've been in the pharma biotech industry for a little over 25 years now, most recently at Gilead, which I joined seven years ago, to head up the quality management systems area. So as the business systems owner for our enterprise-wide quality systems, me and my team have been working on transforming our technology and modernizing our systems and processes from day one. I've also been in industry for over 25 years across both sponsors and CRO industry. I'm currently the head of clinical data management at Replimune, an oncology-focused small biotech. So Peter talked earlier today about the concept of platforms, and I'm wondering how you think about that at your companies and how it's helping you try and achieve your goals there. At Gilead, we use the word platform a lot because it really speaks to the kind of unification we're trying to achieve for all of our processes and data across quality. 
So we really want our quality data to be interconnected, living on the same platform. The documents, our quality events and risks, and our training data, all living together and integratable. Plus, because quality processes support our other end-to-end -end business processes, the quality systems can't live just in their own silo. Our quality data needs to be connected with regulatory processes and data, for instance. We need to leverage jurisdictional controls to support our batch release and our change control impact assessment processes, and all of that needs to be interconnected with manufacturing data as well. So we're on a larger journey, implementing our vault quality suite, other vault suites, and connectors between them, like the QMS rim connector, for instance. We're hoping to, that uh, that will help us achieve risk reduction and improve visibility through streamlined processes. Yeah, for Reblimune, it's about changing process and changing standards for better trials. Old standards of receiving and processing data, especially vendor data, it involves a lot of manual work. The more sources of data that we add, the more manual labor it involves and the more spread out our data is. We've utilized Vault CDB to begin pooling our vendor data and our EDC data together to perform data cleaning in a programmatic and real-time way. You're bringing all of our central lab data into Viva CDB not only reduces the site burden for data entry, it reduces the query and monitoring burden as well. So those are, both of you are taking out a lot of change in your organizations and everyone here knows that change is hard. I'm just curious how you get others on board with this change and how are your results so far? You know, at Reblimune, we have to focus on what's important. Staffing shortages and data backlogs are everywhere at every site. Patients are responsible for co-payments with local labs. We're taking the stance that central lab approach and pooling the data into Viva CDB reduces the site data entry burden, and in fact, across three of our phase two trials that we started this year, we've reduced the data entry burden for our sites by 30% per time point on all three trials. For monitoring costs, that's a savings of almost a million dollars per trial, which is really important to move our trials faster and forward better. That's great. As Regina said, change is hard, and adopting a platform approach is a big commitment for a company. So we at Gilead, we started with the area of greatest need first, and way back in 2015, we implemented quality docs initially for our external partner collaboration processes. And then once we were able to see the efficiency gains, the increased ease of use, and ability to easily maintain the system, it was a much easier decision to make to move forward in expanding that using quality docs for our internal document management, and now implementing and finishing implementing QMS. One thing we do with all of our Vault implementation projects is we make it about uh, our opportunity to align business process against all of our sites globally, all of our business functions. We look to simplify our processes and leverage Viva's industry best practices in that. So by coupling our technology modernization and improvement process with process improvements, we really multiply the value of these efforts to the business. We get our leaders around the business drivers and to see the vision and communicate that strategic vision we're trying to achieve. And then we establish a set of guiding principles that then gets pushed down to the team and the whole organization so that they know what we're trying to achieve for them. So I love that your stories are both driving forward, but actually in very different ways. Regina, your story sounds more revolutionary. We've got new studies, we're gonna do it all differently. Jennifer, you and I have been working together for many years and it's more of an evolution. I'm curious, what's next in your journeys? So what's next for us is, uh, now that we are completing our QMS implementation, we're looking to see how we can transform our processes for external information intake from our external suppliers and vendors and transform that from a document-based approach using quality docs, which we've been doing for years, into a more structured intake process leveraging QMS capabilities. And then we're gonna to continue to build on our successes with Viva, with Vault for our company, adding more products, doing more with our existing products. Our next thing is we're looking to pursue Vault training to see if we can transform the GXP learning experience for our company and really complete our end-to-end -end vision for quality. We're hoping that this platform approach really helps us scale our business, adapt to change, and improve our quality culture. You know, at Replimune, we're working on site-facing site improvements. It is the way of the future. 
We have to grow fast, and we have to standardize in order to repeat and grow our efficiencies, and that's where we're focused today. And now I would like to introduce Jim Riley, our Vice President of Product Strategy for the Development Cloud. Thank you, Avril, Jennifer, Regina. Well, we've talked a lot today about industry partnership. You've heard from Peter and our customers in Avril about the ways that we're being a strategic partner to you all. That's through the lens of software, data, and services. Software, it's about the platforms in each area delivering to your functions what you need to run your business. But also, Viva not letting up, putting the foot on the gas. Seven new products, as Peter shared. Also, continue to improve those products so that we can innovate for your needs and where you challenge us. But then you also heard a little bit about data. Data is this new area where we're entering to help you as partners with things like SideBase and TrialBase and also Open Data Clinical. And we'll continue on that trend. And then services. Services is probably the group that many of you know best because they're the team of experts that help you get your systems off the ground, configured to your need and industry best practices. But we also want to be more strategic with you to help you with more than just the software in your journey to evolve your operation. And so that's why I'm delighted to share we are delivering for the first time a new type of service that really blends software, data, and service together. And that's Viva Business Consulting. In the last year, we've hired over 40 life sciences consultants who have deep industry expertise, and now they're in the Viva family. They're learning the way these products work, the way in which we leverage data and can bring data to you, and they're marrying that up with what they know about industry best practice. And so by combining those consulting capabilities with our software expertise, we can truly affect change. Change for you to align your software investment with your core strategic business objectives, and then in the whole change for the industry to pave the way towards better ways of working. We're now actively delivering projects and really focusing on three core competencies, business process optimization, to really align the way you operate with the way the software works and the way that the industry is heading, to allow you to change more effectively. Software is not the only thing. It's about the way your people and process needs to evolve. And so the business consulting team can help you on that change journey. And then finally, value realization, to really make sure you're getting the most out of that investment with our product areas. So that's business consulting. Again, a new way of being a strategic partner. But you know, the other way that we're a strategic partner is actually this, this community. We are intent on acting as this conduit, this conduit for all of us to get together as an industry and challenge ourselves into better ways of working, to sharing ideas, and to really push ourselves to a vision towards positive change. And that's what this event summit is all about. We're all on this journey together of driving positive change in the industry. Mm -hmm.